Today we're making spring decor DIYs and they're all new. Keep watching! I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Welcome! The first project is a rabbit garden. Alright, so I have this little thrifted uh, soup bowl, I think it is, and it has Peter Rabbit on it. It probably had a lid at some point, but it didn't come that way to me. Love the pictures though. Here's a little de little detailed look at the bottom. Beatrix Potter. I'm going to take some foam, a little bunny that I th thrifted, some of this snow fence, and I got it at the thrift store. Some little random picks. These look kind of spiky. It looks like rosemary. I'm going to use those and cutting them down. A couple of shades of brown, dark and a lighter one. Here are the colors. And then some paint brushes. We're going to make sure that you cut the foam down that you're using so that it fits in your cup. If it fits nice and tight, you don't even need glue. I'm going to add the darkest brown on the bottom and we're going to cover this in the dark brown color. I do make a little bit of a mess and get some on the cup, but you'll see it's uh, pretty easy to clean up when it's still wet. I'm just taking a little um, baby wipe and wrapping around my finger and putting my fingernail under it and cleaning up those edges. I'm going to use two coats and when it is completely dry, we will move on to the next part. Now I'm choosing my front or back, which part that I like the best and I'm going to use this as the front. Alright, I'm going to grab that lighter color brown and we're going to add some little lines down it. Now I'm just going to kind of offload some of this paint on this brush and I don't want these to be completely straight lines. So this is going to look like we've tilled up the soil and we've got it hipped up and we have our little rows ready for our planting. So I'm just going straight down there. I'm just going to bump it up and down until I get it as thick as I like the line. And it looks like little tracks in a garden, doesn't it? And that is the idea. And you can just make this, um, put as many lines as you want, as few lines as you want. Um, you know, whatever colors you like. I'm going to cut some of the tips off the rosemary, that faux rosemary, and it's going to be the top. This is going to be like a little carrot garden. So that's going to be the greens for the top of our carrots. Now I'm measuring from the back of both of the little handles there to get the size of the fence that I'm going to use. And I just cut them off with clippers because they're attached with wire and they're flexible. And I'm just going to push these down to that first line of wires. You can see I have a nice snug fit and it's not going anywhere. However, if you felt the need, you could always put some hot glue down in the sides between where it, um, the foam is or the cup is and the fence. So now we have a little fence on the back. I want to decide first where I want my little bunny to stand. And I think I like him standing over to the side like he's checking out his garden. He's showing off his goods. And I'll just put some on his feet and then I'll add some to his, um, right on his back where he's up against the fence so that he doesn't tilt over. It's just going to give him a little more support. Cute. He's already holding a carrot. Okay, so then I'm going to take a little hot glue and put these down. And you have to hold them for just a second because they're not poked through the styrofoam. They're just sitting on top. So you got to give that glue a chance to set up. You might even choose to use maybe a cool temperature glue for this. And it'll dry quicker. And then I'm just kind of spacing them out and putting them down on those rows. And it looks like little rows of carrots in a garden, doesn't it? So it looks kind of rocky and I like the look of it and I want it to look a little more rustic. So we're going to make it appear like maybe this is Peter Rabbit and he had to clear a little bit of land before he put his garden in. So there's some little stumps and things around his garden. He's been doing some, some work there in the garden and these are what remain. So these little sticks are just the ones that you get in a bag at Dollar Tree, but you can certainly get things out of your yard. If you don't have the same bowl I have, you don't have to use that. You could use maybe a, a soup terrine, 
you know, if you've got one that isn't enormous, or you could make a really big one if you wanted to. You could use the top of a cup. You can find all kinds of little village um, pieces at Dollar Tree, so you could use a gnome or something like that in your garden if you wanted. Now I just want to give it a little extra embellishment, a little more festivity. So I'm going to take a few pieces of jute, and this is uh, a, the regular brown, some orange, and then some white. And I'm going to put them in the handle on one side. And just to kind of balance it out, I'm putting it on the side where the rabbit is not. So it's across from where the rabbit is. And I'm going to just tie that in a knot and trim it off. You could use baker's twine here, or you don't have to use anything. If you choose not to put any extra, you certainly do not have to. But I want the idea of this to be something that can go in, you know, from spring to Easter and possibly into summer. So now once I get that piece down there on the bottom, I'm going to take a longer piece of the three and I'm going to make a bow. This is a simple bow. This is like we tie our shoes or this is how I tie my shoes. Interesting enough, I learned how to make this bow from a doctor um, when I was working as a nurse in a hospital. Uh, my shoes kept coming untied and he showed me how to tie them this way rather than tying them where you poke the little rabbit in the hole, whatever that little saying is when you're learning to tie your shoes. Yeah, and it works. It locks that bow in and it stays there a long time. So I've done my shoes that way since he taught me that in like early 2000. Now I found this little, it's actually like a little pepper, but it looks like a carrot to me. So I'm just gonna put that right in that bow and have it hanging on the side. And you can tell that now it gives you an idea that this is Peter Rabbit's little carrot garden. And it is precious. Okay, the next project is going to be a spring wreath. This is a wreath that I have used before in other projects. This is a pick from Dollar Tree love it. These are some thrifted flowers and Dollar Tree flowers. And the greenery I have there is like some form of eucalyptus, but it has been around forever. I'm going to use it today. I have some burlapfabric.com ribbon and then some that I thrifted, two different ones I thrifted. And they just coordinate with the colors in the sign. So to get these off without breaking it, you need to kind of support the back, twist it back and forth, that little wire that's in there twist it back and forth carefully you don't want to bend your, bend your tractor and then it just will kind of unscrew or like pull out now I'm going to clip off a little metal piece that was sticking down there when I pulled it off make it nice and smooth and I'll cut these into more manageable pieces cut all my greenery down except these picks and I will be trimming those as we go you can use a round um, a round wreath form for this. You don't have to use this one, but I wanted to use it again. So here we go. I'm going to start pressing these in. And the reason I laid my tractor there is because I want to make sure that I have enough space for the tractor where it's not covered in greenery. So that's why I started the first one out this way. This happens to be wrapped in a, um, it's wrapped in some jute. So that helps me to kind of feed the greenery down into it. And then I'm going to work sort of backwards from there. And I'm going to continue putting all the pieces in in the same direction. I'm, I'm going to trim the little stems down wherever they need to be trimmed so that they're not hanging out the bottom of our frame. I want to sort of keep the shape of the frame. And because it's on wire, I can bend things and give it more of a, mm, just a better look, I think. A smoother well put together look so see how we follow the bend with the curve of the greenery I like that and y'all don't be afraid to play with the greenery and and especially when it has wire in it kind of fluff it out pull your pieces around give it a natural look everything's not going to grow into one flat shape you know give it a little bit of life we want it to look nice and springy and ready to go for warmer weather Continue around until you get to where like the top of your tractor would be 
and I hope y'all can find these little tractors are so cute but be careful when you're picking them because sometimes the wording or parts of it at Dollar Tree they can be kind of faded or kind of maybe not really crisp so just look through them and find one that looks really crisp and it'll give you a better look I'm going to use some very thin floral wire that I have and just feed it through the tires or the wheels of this tractor and then across the frame and then twist them in the back. You can tuck the ends underneath or you can just uh, cut them off, whichever way is easiest. Didn't want to use a pipe cleaner, did not want to use any other color because this blends so well. See that? It doesn't even stand out. You can really just barely see it. Then I'm gonna give you a couple of options on how you can do this wreath because we don't all like the same thing, right? And because in my process, I sometimes do things, I cut it out of the videos for timing reasons, but you know, sometimes I'll do something, undo it, and then try it a different way. So I'm gonna show you how I did it. Now this fern that I'm putting in actually came out of those pink flowers that comes from Dollar Tree and I pulled them off the branches so that I could space them out because there were only four and I wanted to be able to use them kind of throughout the wreath. So you're just gonna poke them here and there. They're on plastic, that's why I'm gluing them down. They don't have a wire or a stem part that I could push into the frame to secure it in place. So just a little hot glue and hold it there for a minute. Then I'm gonna start putting down the pink flowers. I'm doing those next because I have the most of those. So I'm gonna use those and space them out. And we're gonna go in the same direction as we did with the eucalyptus. I'm saying eucalyptus, this looks like the eucalyptus that the panda bears eat. So I don't know for sure if that's eucalyptus, but I'm just gonna call it that and feel free to correct me if that is not right. I'm just gonna continue to tuck them in until I get as many as I want. And I did have a little bit left over of this that I can use in other arrangements. And if you're new here, I just wanna welcome you and tell you that if you're looking for a better view of the projects when they are finished, my very end of the video is going to show you where, um, how the finished looks are. So I'm just showing you that I'm coordinating the flowers on the back of the tractor with the flowers that I chose to put in the wreath. So I'm going to put these yellow carnations in. And this is the part where you're going to see two different options. There'll be another part shortly too. So at first, I start doing like a little bunch in the corner where I will put all of these into the corner across from where the tractor is. Kind of a little a clump or a little cluster. Gives you more of an impact and it actually kind of looks like hydrangeas when you do them like this. It makes it look a little pom-pom when you put them close together, which is cute. So there's the one option. And with that, we're going to make a little bow. And this is just some of that really pretty ribbon from Dollar Tree from their Easter section. And I've had mine for a while, but I'm pretty sure I saw some either the same type or similar to this this year. But I had, I had some from last year. Love plaids. And so the colors in here match very well to what we were doing with the tractor and the wreath. So I decided, hey, let's add one of these little bows right here under the flowers. And you can just put that down with a little hot glue. If this is something you want to put outside, be sure you secure everything down with like Gorilla Glue or soup, some type of a super glue, E6000, so that the temperature and the wind doesn't blow it to pieces. So this is your first option with this wreath. And now I'm going to show you another way you can do it. You can rearrange your flowers. This is why we glue last. Into separate sections. So you have more of the yellow spaced out across your wreath. And this is a very simple wreath with only, well, pretty much one type of greenery. We do have a few pieces of fern, but pretty much one type of greenery and then a little bit of floral, pretty simple. So that's how that will look. And we can switch out the bow also and make a bigger bow to go right underneath here. So now you got some options and you can decide which way that you like it best and then do yours the way you like it the best. 
So now I'm just going to make some of these almost like uh, you do an awareness sign and then you squish the center down into the tails just like this. I put it against the tractor to make sure I don't have anything that's going to be so big that it overwhelms the tractor and blocks it. I want to be able to see that. I love the little hello spring on there. I don't like a ton of wording on the stuff that I have um, like I used to when I did more of a farmhouse theme, but a little bit is okay, I think. And that is simply my preference and, you know, my thought process. But if you are still into the wording and things like that, that's okay. That's fine. I have, uh, you know, I can appreciate different types of art and different types of creators. And I've definitely subscribed to lots of different types of channels here on YouTube. So, you know, it's okay. We can do things differently. It doesn't have to be the same as everybody else, right? We're not saying there's anything wrong about the way anybody does their crafting just kind of about preference. So once you get your three bows ready and they're all pretty much the same size, we're going to take a zip tie around the center and tighten it down. Put your wire in the back first before you tighten it so you can attach it to the frame and then you can fluff out your bows. And don't be bothered by the fact that the yellow tails are so long. You'll see that I do trim everything down. But I like to get an idea of scale before I start cutting it off. So now I'm just kind of pulling and fluffing out the bows, otherwise they will lay flat. And the ribbon that is on top there does not have any wire in it. But if you put it on top, it's supported by the wired ribbons underneath and it, it'll stay pretty well in shape there. So just taking some more of that ribbon that we use for the tiny bow, I'm going to go right around the center of it so that we don't see the zip tie. And it really does coordinate quite well with what's going on in that plaid ribbon on top. So you really don't even notice. I'm going to just put that through underneath the tractor and through the wreath that's underneath and just going to twist it down. And then again, you can tuck it into the frame or you can cut it off. You don't want anything scratching your door or your wall, depending on where you put this. And then we'll need to fluff again. Now, if you want to wait to the end to do all your fluffing, you can certainly do that. But this is one of the favorite parts of crafting for me is playing with my bows. So I like to really get in there and just get the best shape that I can get out of my bow. And then at this point, you want to trim more off. You can certainly trim more off. I don't want a whole bunch taken away from the tractor and the wreath, so I don't want to put too much on there. So I've given you a couple of options in this wreath. I hope that you will take the ideas and run with it, gather some inspiration because that's what this channel is all about. The next is going to be a house hanger. Now we've seen these before, right? At Dollar Tree, we're gonna take one of these little ceramic pieces from Dollar Tree. And this is a transfer sticker from Dollar Tree. And then I have some thrifted ribbon here and then another dif different uh, set of ribbon. So some thrifted and some Dollar Tree. I'm going to start by getting off any oils that came from our hands and any dirt completely off of here with a wipe. Then dry it off. And then once it is completely dry, we'll work on putting our sticker on here. Now the sticker fits almost perfectly. And really, once you get done with it, you won't know that it didn't come this way. I'm going to turn it and then just slowly put it down by pushing it out with this little, um, I guess you would call it maybe a squeegee or something. I use this to get the wrinkles out of everything, get the bubbles out. Really good for decoupaging too. I'll cut off my little excess sticker that's hanging over. Just make sure you get it in the right spot. And then you can use a sanding block or some sandpaper, your finger sander, an emery board, whatever you want to use to gently just take off the edges that are hanging over. And that's what I'm doing here. I want to give you some options on this one as well. I'm going to give you two different ways to embellish it. So you can do like a little messy bow here. And this is an easy bow that I have done lots of times. I'm just crossing over. I have two pieces of each one of these ribbons that I showed you. And I'm just going to cross them over, make an X, 
and you can flip them over with a piece of thin ribbon or some jute like I'm showing you here. You're going to tie it in a double knot in the middle. And then you can take the uh, tails and either dovetail those or you can cut them at a slant. Whichever way is your preference. You don't have to have wired ribbon here. And certainly when you make one so small, you don't have to, you don't need wired ribbon at all. So it's very tight. I pulled it really tight. Now you could use that bow on the top. You can use it on the side because you got room there on that chimney if you wanted to. But for me, I thought it was just too much going on. Too much going on with the pattern. So I decided against that one. And I'm just going to make a very simple bow with this pretty yellow. I hope I have enough of this yellow left when I start on my bee projects because this is a beautiful golden yellow that I think is going to work great with those projects. So y'all better stay tuned if you're into the bee decor because I've got so much planned. All right, I'm going to trim these off and I'm just cutting them at a slant, but you do whatever you prefer to finish your bow off. Then I can put it in the middle or I can put it on the side. And I like the idea of it being on the side, so I'm just going to put it right here on the chimney. Making sure I got those little bow loops flipped out. And the little wiggle is just to make sure that it stays in place. That's all I'm doing there. Now the flowers, I'm going to cut this little stemmy part, the little plastic stemmy part where it's almost flush so that it'll lay down flat on my project. I don't want my flower to come completely apart. I'm going to add another piece of greenery to it, help hold it all together. And then I'll add some hot glue on the bottom and stick it to that bow, just to give it a little extra something. I didn't have the right color yellow greenery or that would have been cute there, I think. But this is just using what I have. Add a little bit more to it. And then I have a little piece of a little berry pick that's green and I put that on there too. Beautiful. So easy. This is the easiest one that we did and I saved it for last. And I hope that you try it and you can find the supplies to use for it. You could always use stickers. The theme for this video was sort of like a garden type style stuff and kind of a rustic-y but springy and possibly crossing over to Easter. These projects are done to bring you inspiration. They are created to get your mind thinking. You look at my projects, there may be something you don't like, and that is fine. Change that. Do what you do like. You know, keep what you like and just go and pass over what you don't like. You know, make it your own. I encourage that. I really know that we all have some creativity in us. We just need to trust and nourish that part of us. We need to give it wings to fly, you know? Trust in your abilities and don't worry about what other think people think about your creations unless you're selling them. If you're keeping them for yourself, then do exactly what you like and what brings your heart joy. If you haven't subscribed to this channel already, I do budget-friendly, creative DIYs for your home, something unique and different, and I would love to have you as part of the family. I really, really appreciate you stopping by. It means so very much, so much. The channel is growing thanks to all of you. And pretty soon, as I get it together, I've got some exciting news coming. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.